Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If you enjoy this video, please become a nurse and threaten patients that you will unplug their life support if they don't subscribe, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Welcome to my Viking settlement in England. We play as Eivor, and this is my crew of lovable Scandinavians who might look tough but have hearts of gold. Well, I mean, we do murder entire families together and steal their belongings, but hey, we all have long silky hair worthy of a Pantene commercial, so it's kosher. It's a pretty wholesome little settlement, honestly. Here's a group of young kids enjoying the sunshine. Sure, in three months or so, the boys will be laying down their lives for Thor, and the girls will be forced into arranged marriages against their will, but at least we have a pet cat. You can upgrade this place, but I have no resources at the moment, so we'll need to head out on an expedition soon. I spend the money I do have building wells absolutely everywhere for convenient hydration. Also, look at the sleeping quarters. This is pretty rough. That's like eight people to one room and there's no mattresses, just hay. It's like we're trying to develop early onset osteoporosis, but I guess this is just how it is for our kind. Our leader wants to speak with me and so I head up towards her hut. She says we need allies and tells me to get it done. What a tyrant. Also, wow, I guess we used all the pillows and blankets for her California king bed. What a snake. I'm literally sleeping one foot from an overweight pervert called Loki, hooray democracy. I head down to the docks, but unnecessarily climb everything instead of taking the path because Assassin's Creed. It's time the crew and I went out and did a little pillaging, and so we set sail in our Viking longship. It's a bit of pill to swallow, but I guess I'll just have to accept that I need to obey the orders from my superior. I mean, I did try and assassinate her before we left, but she takes arrows to the face like a champ. A short way up the river, I see a small village and do what all good Vikings should do. A blow into my horn to pump up the crew for some good old fashioned pillaging. I really feel as if we could have run to the front of the boat and jumped straight onto the land, completely avoiding getting soaking wet, but I guess it's not nearly as cinematic. The village has a surprisingly large resistance force, but I focus down the tougher opponents in an attempt to keep the rest of my crew alive. I don't mean to disrespect my opponents, but their last stand might be the fastest and most pathetic thing I've ever seen in my life, and I've made love next to a mirror. I mean, I do obviously train my glutes pretty intensely, look at this vertical leap, it was one-way traffic. I want to loot the monastery, but it's barred, so I climb up onto the roof. Unfortunately, the enthusiastic Malakas have already started lighting everything on fire, and it's like they learned nothing in basic raiding training. First you kill everyone, then you loot, and then finally you burn everything. It's really crucial you don't confuse the last two steps. Fortunately, we get the booty just in time, and pocket some of that sweet, sweet raw materials. You know that classic proverb, take only what you need and leave the land as you found it? I'm pretty sure the Vikings didn't hear that one. It's back to finding an ally, which means back to the open water. Well, rivers aren't really open water, but the important thing is I figured out how to shoot arrows while sailing. I'm not sure how useful this will be yet, but I do enjoy the Viking life because being unnecessarily violent increases the immersion for once. I decide to make a quick stop and proceed to dive into shallow water, which can easily cause injury on impact or even hypoxia, aka low oxygen to the brain. Way to think it through, Eivor. Anyway, I stopped so that I could climb this tower and do the iconic swan dive into an implausibly small pile of hay. At this point, I can't tell if my mission is to form an alliance or do as much damage to my spine as humanly possible. I do gather some iron ore because women love a man with 99 mining as it shows dedication and then we continue downstream. I arrive at some seedy city and proceed to completely miss the dock because I failed to press Y in time. Eric the Red, eat your heart out. I'm not exactly welcomed here, so I put on a sketchy hood to make myself seem more friendly and approachable and then head into town. There's this drunk guy stumbling about and there's also an option to lure him, which of course I do. I feel like one of those 40 year old guys who hangs out at university bars preying on intoxicated women, aka real estate agents. The architecture of this city is nice, but it's frankly pretty disgusting that they don't like having my kind here. So what? We don't conform to a traditional Western lifestyle. If this was 2020, you'd all be getting the worst punishment imaginable. You'd all be getting cancelled on Twitter. I don't want to overstay my welcome, so I steal a horse and start the long ride to find my friends in the city of Repton. The journey is long and harsh. I even paddle a small boat for a bit, which looks picturesque as f but is wildly inefficient. I finally arrive and everyone here is pretty weird. 
Of course, these are my allies. God forbid we get some majestic city. No, we get the muddy tent palace, but I guess this is way more Viking-like. Maybe the people here are nice on the inside, and after all, that's what matters the most. It turns out they're definitely not, and are also really into prolonged torture. They will, however, ride with me to threaten and or negotiate with the king down the road about the whole alliance thing. I'm actually starting to think that the term alliance is being used very loosely by my people, but it's best not to ask too many questions. We ride out, and I accidentally trample a small fence which I feel terrible about. Someone lovingly crafted that, and there I go ruining it all. I know we're Vikings, but there's a line. I also remember that you can slab squat on horses, which will never get old for me. We reach the castle and begin negotiations, which in a nutshell, doesn't go very well. And basically, we let them know that we'll be sieging their fortress this afternoon. I'm no warlord, but giving them a heads up like this seems like a strange decision, i.e. the element of surprise. Ah well, there's no such thing as overconfidence, and that's coming from someone who faps with the lights on and the curtains open. I ride off to meet our captain, but on the way spot a simply idyllic country cottage. Wow, talk about location, only 250 meters from the city, which of course is about to be sieged, but imagine the long-term growth prospects. It's got a little field out the front of what I'm hoping is opium, and you know what, maybe I might just make a little life for myself out here. I could become an opium farmer and be the first ever Vikings narcotics dealer. Nah, we better siege this castle, and so I head on over to our war camp and let them know that I'm ready. Sieging forts is good clean fun. You can use the ram to batter doors down, but I'm obviously just going to climb everything. I then just sneak around and let my crew in easily. Think big, work smart. Maybe I should rebrand to one of those cringe cryptocurrency type motivation channels, where some knob wearing a Tommy Hilfiger polo tells you what you're doing wrong in life in front of his mum's 2006 BMW. I sometimes get interested in the price of Bitcoin, and for like two weeks after I Google the price, I'm bombarded with those type of ads. You know what, I'm going to become one of those guys, so I encourage you to invest smart. Buy my financial ebook, releasing fall 2021, which will be 248 pages of copy and pasted Wikipedia articles and SpongeBob erotica fanfiction. The fight is getting pretty hectic, so I decide to sneak away and kill the big girl in charge to put an end to this once and for all. After a long, grueling fight, we successfully siege the castle and put the guy who likes to torture civilians in charge. What could go wrong? My work here is done, and it feels good to be successfully playing the Game of Thrones. Like the show, get it? What a cool pop culture reference in a YouTube video, how relatable. Except every time I think about that show, it gives me clinical depression because season 8 hurt me more than any of my childhood traumas ever could. It's finally time to go back to my modest cottage and smoke a little opium. No, I mean it's time to go and lead the Viking invasion some more. First, I decide to head back to my settlement and just check in to see how everyone's getting on. You know, install a few more wells, that sort of thing. You can build all sorts of things here that can improve your stats and the well-being of your camp and crew. Most importantly, the local sculptor ensures his statues have their clothes on, not like that unholy statue of David. Not only is that statue inappropriate, it's also a huge flex, like geez Dave, we can't all have massive peenies, you show off. I get some ink put on so that I can look like a troubled teen, and I sure hope the other Vikings don't judge me for it. This guy I went to school with has face tats, and he always puts up posts saying that people judge him unfairly, and it's like Aaron, bro. You stabbed your brother and went to prison for it, they're not judging the face tats, you're just genuinely a psychopath. In truth, only good people have face tats. Mother Teresa, face tats. Jesus, face tats. Barney the Dinosaur, no face tats, but a hectic tramp stamp. I had to remove and hide some armor pieces to show off this ink, otherwise what's the point? Not ideal for battle, but I look great. Okay, I need to get some information off another leader, but first I eat some mysterious mushrooms of the magic nature. No joke, I had a pretty good trip, saw some seals flopping around, but they don't belong on land. What fun. That's the base where the journal is being kept, and honestly I just want to siege it as I'm not that into diplomacy. My friend has other ideas though, so I guess we'll try talking first. This is the leader, and she calls me a lovely dove, which I imagine is pretty misogynistic in this era. Well, obviously not misogynistic, as she's a woman, but you know what I mean. She wants 520 coins for the journal, and so of course I say no. 
This is an early access tutorial and I won't be able to keep any money so it's kind of pointless trying to save my wealth but it's a decision based on principle. I also think she forgot that I'm a crazy good climber, a beast assassin, I have some vision that lets me see everyone and I can also whistle to lure people closer. Did you know around 50% of people can't whistle so if you can be proud of that. I work my way through the camp, this time finessing the situation rather than starting a full blown medieval war. It starts to rain which at the very least will be great for the wells back at the settlement. That's definitely not how wells work but I mean whatever it can't hurt. I storm the main cabin and I'll admit I forgot I was here to steal a journal and not kill everyone. Anyway the camp will be easier to search with everyone incapacitated so it's not like I'm wasting my time. This is definitely not a great way to make allies like my well rested leader wanted. Probably should have paid the 520 coins. This lass is pretty tough so I do the mature thing and climb up onto the roof and then shoot her with arrows from above just like a real viking would. I also burn the body to ensure there'll be no open casket funeral for the family which again won't do a lot of good for the whole alliance democracy vision but it's quite amusing. I grab all the information I can and sneak away without any trouble. So it looks like everyone lived happily ever after and we're all allies now. Well not really at all, I think I made relations much worse but I did build a new bakery. So fresh sourdough loaves for everyone. Thanks for watching you absolute legends and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.